robots are taking over everything and a greenhouse is no different. With a greenhouse, if you want to do less work and make more money, you need a robot or simple machine to automate some of your daily time-consuming tasks, saving you hours of work every day. Simple Tech, that's the name of this channel, and we have piles of other videos on greenhouses you can check out after watching this one. In this video, I'm going to review automating some everyday greenhouse functions like cooling, heating, lighting, watering, pollinating, and harvesting with some very simple technology to save you time and help you put more money in your pocket at the end of the day. Let's get started. Greenhouses heat up. And who wants to keep running out to open or close the vents or windows? The simplest device to automate opening and closing of a vent is a heat activated window or vent opener. These usually work with a type of wax that expands and contracts depending on the temperature and a screw allows you to set the temperature when they activate. Fans are the next level in cooling and automizing a fan is done just as for a home air conditioner with a thermostat. The fan comes on and off when certain temperatures inside are hit. Simple thermostats makes turning your fans on and off easy exactly when you need it to happen. Some people don't think of a thermostat as a robot but that's exactly what it is. A robot that can control the climate inside your greenhouse and it's essential simple technology to keep a greenhouse running at a growable temperature inside. Some fans are electric requiring on the grid connections and some are powered by solar panels. Regardless of how you power your fan, automated vents and fans are the first step you need for better automated control of your greenhouse growing climate. Regardless of how you heat your greenhouse, be it electric, gas, propane, wood, solar, compost, or other, the number one simple technology gadget that will help you grow better and save you money and time is, once again, a thermostat. Most thermostats aren't expensive, and if your heating system will allow you to install one, you suddenly get stable winter temperatures, which your plants will thank you for. Now you can set up and get one of those fancy dancy thermostats that decrease the temperature at night. And although more expensive to buy, lowering the temperature at night can save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on your heating bill. So upgrading this device is something maybe you should consider. Thermostats are probably the most important simple technology you can employ to save money with a winter greenhouse, as heat is usually the number one expense for four season greenhouse operations or anyone that wants to grow in the winter, spring, or fall. I'd love to hear what kind of automating you're using in your greenhouse regarding heating in the comments below. A lot of people don't think auxiliary lighting is necessary in a greenhouse, but if you live in northern climates, Fall and winter have reduced sunlight periods and boosting your plant's growth with artificial light is the best way to speed up produce production. It doesn't matter if you have LED, fluorescent, or some fancy type of HPS lights. Automating your lights is a heck of a lot easier than flipping a light switch on and off. And there's two main types of devices to do this. The first is a solar switch with a timer so that the lights go on when there's less than a set amount of sunlight and stay on for a set amount of time with a timer. The second is just using a timer. The problem with just using a timer is every week or two, you have to adjust when the lights come on as the sun keeps moving and sunset time is slightly later or earlier every day, depending on the time of the year. That being said, the simple technology of a timer or a solar timer can save you an enormous amount of headache flipping switches late into the evening and turning them off after your plants got all the additional artificial light they need and it's time to make everything dark so your plants can sleep. Watering a greenhouse can take up a huge amount of a gardener's time on a daily basis. You see pictures of greenhouse gardeners watering their plants all over the place. But there's another way. The solution is a watering system set up on a timer 
distributing a set amount of water to the plants at specific times during the day. Now, having a watering system doesn't mean you can forget to check on your plants, but checking on your plants is a lot less time than watering your plants two to three times a day. You can buy expensive commercial watering systems, or you can go to Amazon, eBay, or Alibaba and buy some Chinese-made watering systems that work on a timer and will do everything you need for a large amount of plants for under 50 bucks. All that's needed is a hose spigot with pressurized water as the electricity to run these timers often just comes from a couple of cheap AA batteries. The size of your greenhouse and amount of plants you need to water will determine the size and cost of system you'll need here. Having a municipal or pressurized water system helps, but if you can somehow draw warm pressurized stored rainwater from some kind of large barrel or cistern, the extra nitrogen and minerals the rainwater picks up from the air is one of the best ways to get rapid plant growth. Try not to water your plants directly with super cold well or municipal water or you're going to stunt their growth. Hand pollination works but it's very time consuming. If you've ever had to hand pollinate and have a large greenhouse, after 30 to 50 plants you start dreaming about automation. Now, there has been some research into robot insects to pollinate your plants, but at this point in time it's not a reality. You don't have to worry about swarms of robot bees yet. Yet. Now, if you watched one of my previous videos on pollination, you'd realize there's no other creature or gadget that compares to leaf cutter bees when it comes to pollinating. They outperform all other birds and insects, and even seriously outperform honey and bumblebees without any of the swarm sting risk factors. Now in summer, you can cheat and just open your windows and doors wide up and use natural local pollinators during the day. But once things get colder, you have to bring in your own pollinators. The best way to automate pollinating is just to buy some leaf cutter bees. Leaf cutter bees, or mason bees as some call them, is a simple way to use natural technology to automate pollinating your plants. I can't think of anything better to increase produce than investing in some leaf cutter bees and experimenting with this natural creature. It's something you really should try as the rewards are incredible and most large commercial greenhouses use bees to automate pollination and seriously increase their produce production. Harvest is what it's all about. And although just picking your produce by hand is great, the bigger your greenhouse gets, the bigger this task becomes. Automating some things and how you harvest your crop will save you time and money. But determining what devices you need to help automate harvesting varies so much, depending on what you're growing. With tomatoes, it's possible to get a robot harvesting machine, but this technology is just in its infancy right now, and most commercial operations just employ people to pick their plants. Flower operations aren't much different requiring a lot of manual labor with few options available at this time to automate the process at harvest time. Hydroponics and aquaponics systems use floating rafts to somewhat automate harvesting, moving entire rafts through a cycle so that when the plants are ready, they are positioned in the optimum location for harvesting. But the final plucking is usually done by humans here too. Now, outside, in the fields, the situation is a lot different. Crops like wheat, corn, and soy are harvested by combines. Fruit trees have shaking devices to fall the fruit. Potatoes have potato pickers that pluck them from under the ground. In fact, most of the produce you eat that came from a field involved automated harvesting in some way. Yes, teams of human pickers still exist, but this labor force is slowly being replaced every year by better, cheaper, and faster automated systems and machines. Greenhouses, though, seem to be much more reliant on human harvesting, at least for now. I hope you enjoyed this video on automation in a greenhouse. There's so much subject matter on automating a greenhouse that this video could go on for hours exploring every little gadget imaginable. But if I got you thinking about ways you can automate your daily tasks, hopefully I saved you some time and money. Simple tech has piles of other videos on greenhouses. If you have or are planning to build a greenhouse, 
you need to check out my other videos on this channel. Also, please post what automation devices or machines you use in your greenhouse to make your day go faster and make you more profitable in the comments below. See you next time.